to everybody through their system. Uh, at this time, uh, we're joined by Appala Appalachian State Head Coach Dustin Kearns. Coach, could you please start with a brief opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Well, I need a little something stronger than a water. <laughs> um, you know what? March Madness, here we are. Uh, just two really good teams going at it. And um, yeah, I've been a head coach for four years, and I'm sure I'll have all kinds of different scenarios. But being up eight with 30 seconds, but credit Texas State, they, they were making tough threes and um, was trying to get to a foul there at the end, but didn't, wasn't able to execute it. Credit them, they made a shot. But so proud of our guys for regrouping, getting overtime, toughing it out, and finding a way to win that game. But overall, just an incredible college basketball game. Thank you, Coach. This time we'll go to questions. Uh, you kind of referenced it a little bit about the challenges of coming back in overtime and playing. But what did you tell you? I just we, – we studied adversity in the preseason. And, and I just reminded them of that. Hey, listen, uh, we, we studied this. And uh, we've got to regroup, make the next play. The game is not over. So don't act like it's over. And um, I, I thought our bench really rallied some guys up, especially Justin Forrest, who, you know, missed the game-winning free throw. And he really got lifted up. And then, you know, seeing that ball go in the basket for him was, was huge. But, um, you know, it wasn't easy. You know, you're up eight and 30 seconds. And, and you know, certainly that's not easy. But, um, you know, I think Justin Forrest showed an incredible, all right, Donovan Gregory, all that, but, but that's basketball. That's basketball, but credit him, credit his teammates for lifting him up, getting him through the moment, and guess what? When it really, really mattered, he made him. Incredibly proud of him and, and, and the grit that he showed there. He showed a lot. Best shooting day. Almonte had a great game, but missed some shots. But when it came down to it, all of them took care of business on the court. How, how does that make you feel about your team? Well, incredibly great people in our locker room that really care for one another. And uh, listen, I credit Texas State. They're the top defensive team in the league. I think we're second. But um, they're not. You're not going to get any easy looks against those guys. And so um, our guys missing shots. You know what? That's that's part of it. But Justin Forrest, 14 for 17 from the free throw line, that's incredible. Um, and so, um, but I thought defensively, we got critical stops when we needed to get stops. And um, we went on a, a really good run there defensively. We, yeah, we got some shots then, but we got stops. Um, and just a, just a great college basketball game, tournament play, March Madness, here we are. Talking specifically on Almonacy, he did a little bit of everything for you, including hitting a huge shot. How much did he mean to your team tonight? A lot. You know, certainly <laughs> primary ball handler, but, you know, he's got some moxie to him. He's got some uh, some attitude to him in a good way. He lifts others. And, um, you know, you know, certainly he, he said after the game, this is why I came here. That's why I came here to play for this opportunity. He said that in the, in the tunnel before we even got to the locker room. And so, you know, he left it on the floor. He wasn't the only one, all of our guys. I mean, we had all of our guys make some big moments on both ends. I know you're used to playing back-to-backs, especially this season, but are back-to-back -back close games in a tournament atmosphere more grueling? Oh, yeah, for sure. But that's what you expect. You know, this is the third most competitive league in the country. And so uh, I'm not surprised by it, you know. Right before us, Arkansas State, Georgia State, close game. Like, there's going to be a lot of close games. It's March Madness, um, neutral court. This is fun, though. This is what you play for. This is what you're in the in the October, um, you know, weight room sessions and, and the conditioning and, 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 the, and the extra film sessions. This is what you do it for, the extra shooting, to have this opportunity. And my experience, you get to the semifinals, it's, uh, it's open ball game. Uh, how did you adjust on both ends of the floor when James Lewis had to leave the game? So at halftime, and I credit J James Lewis for being a team guy, he said, Coach, I really want to go, but I, I don't want to hurt the team. I just can't do it defensively. 
And so um, credit R.J. Duhart. I don't know if he came out in the second half. He, he gave us some huge minutes, uh, especially him and Donovan playing with four fouls. We, we went zone. We got down 8-10 maybe. We went zone. It really changed the game. But then they got comfortable. We went back man. And, um, and so, but that really helped us, uh, you know, get them out of rhythm offensively. In the first 37 minutes of the game, the two teams scored 100 points total. And then in the last eight minutes, you guys combined to score about 30 points, including a guy like Asbury who was 0 for 7 from behind the arc and hits those long threes. What, what changed down the stretch in the game? Good players. There's a lot of good players on the court. Asbury should not line open. Neither were our players. Our players made tough shots. Asbury shots. I mean, they made incredible out of three point shooter. None of that happened. It just there's a lot of good players out there, and um, and and that's what happens. Um, good players make good plays. Was there any advantage for you in already having played a game in this tournament? Do you think? I think so. I think so. My experience as a coach, I think that uh, especially the first game, and, I, and I've been a part of the where, in their situation where you're you're sitting there waiting. It's not easy. The pressure's on you. The other team's got to win. The other team's got some confidence. I definitely, you know, certainly thought it was an advantage. Uh, one final question. Yeah, the advantage of actually having a day off before. The one final question. Uh, you'll play Coastal tomorrow for the first time this season. Uh, how much have you scouted them, and what do you know about them? Uh, not recently, but when we were shut down with our paws, we, were, we, we thought we were going to be playing them when we came off pause because we had Georgia State canceled, and so we were trying to test out of quarantine, and so we were ready to go with Coastal. Uh, I, I watched several games during quarantine, and then all of a sudden we realized we weren't going to be able to get out, and those games got canceled. So we, we've had the, you know, preparation up to that point. Obviously, we'll catch up with their recent games. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Coach. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow. Shortly. And I was correct. Hello, Justin. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us tonight. Uh, we're going. I'm going to be asking you all the questions that the media have for you this evening. All right. Our first question for you uh, relates to the overtime. You hit a huge three with 2.16 to go. Then you grabbed a key rebound and hit two free throws. What, what, what were you thinking at that point in the game when, when you needed to have some big shots? Um, I just knew it was winning time, um, and we had to pull away at that moment. We had an opportunity, and we had to take advantage of it. Uh, my teammates kept cheering me on, kept giving me that confidence, and uh, we all just knew it was winning time, so we had to do what we needed to do. You had 28 points in the game. You, sh you shot great from the line. You did miss a free throw in the final seconds that gave him the chance to come back. Was that weighing on your mind at all in overtime? Um, my teammate, I, it was going into the huddle before overtime, but, you know, my coach and teammate, we, we, they preached next, mix up, next play mentality, and uh, that's what I did. You know, I, it was over with. Nothing I could do about it at that point. Uh, I knew we had to go out and play another five minutes in overtime and get the job done. You have an eight-point lead with about a minute to go in the game, and then they hit some miracle shots to, to force overtime. How tough is it to get yourself focused again to play the overtime period? Um, we, well, we know the game is not over until you see triple zeros, and, you know, they hit some tough shots uh, going into that, that late second half to put us into overtime, and we knew we just had to come out and, and play harder in overtime so we wouldn't have to go into another one. Uh, credit their team, like, like I said, down the stretch they did, they made some incredible shots, but, you know, they weren't hitting all the game, so it was expectable. But uh, we just needed to do what we did to uh, get the job done, and we did. This question was asked of your coach also. Uh, you're used to playing back-to-back -back games, especially this year with COVID. But now you've played that really tomorrow and playing again. So uh, recover for the next day. So we're going to go back to the hotel, watch film, take care of our bodies, ice up, heal up, and I'll be ready to come out here and play another game tomorrow. 
hold on, I'm waiting to see if we have any additional questions for Justin. Any questions for Justin, please? Justin, I think you can uh, head back to the locker room and uh, get ready for tomorrow. You need your rest. Thank, Thank you for joining us. No problem. Thank you. No problem. So much more. Thank you. Thanks.